end of the day, the message that I think we can all take away from today is that everybody has to follow the rules and follow the law. Councilwoman Barbara Rose Collins realizes the mayor violated his bond conditions, but she doesn't believe he should be locked up in jail. I think he should have been confined to home. Uh, you know, not to a jail. Uh, people kill people and they let them walk the streets. Detroit City Council members tell us that this does not change plans to go forward with those forfeiture hearings. They are scheduled to begin August 18th. At the City County Building, Ronnie Dahl, Fox 2 News. I'm sorry. I did violate the conditions of the bond because I got a phone call. The mayor admits he made mistakes. Why some tonight say his decision to do this right there, to speak in court today, is one of those big mistakes. How it can impact his trial down the road. Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick spending the night in jail. It is grabbing headlines across the country. And so the question is being asked all over the place. What happens tomorrow in circuit court and with the efforts to remove the mayor from office? Fox 2 legal analyst Charlie Langton and our problem solver Scott Lewis has been on this story since the beginning are talking to us today about the developments. All right, Charlie, let's start with you. You were there for Sheriff Warren Evans' news conference today when he, he said they were treating the mayor pretty much like any other inmate uh, and that he's under 24 hours surveillance. Now, is that typical? And why would they be putting him under surveillance? Well, listen, first of all, you have to remember that uh, is it typical? The answer could be is, is yes. Anybody that goes to jail for the first time, and from what we know, this is Kwame Kilpatrick's first time in jail. Jail is not the Manoogian mansion. It's far from it. And that could play effect on the mayor's what mind. Are you say what are you saying? Well, you have to be, you have to worry about a suicide. I mean, I don't want to say that could happen here, but I saw the mayor in court today. He didn't look like the mayor. Even that speech that we heard, I mean, there was a little bit of a ramble to him. And when he was walking out and when his attorney said, I think you're going to jail, that is not what the mayor of Detroit has ever probably heard in his life. I would watch him tonight in case he does something stupid. And I'd have to watch him. And if it's suicide, I don't think he's going to do it. But I tell you, I'd be watching him tonight. I absolutely would. It is certainly a precaution, and the sheriff said that they would take all precautions for his own protection. Scott, let me turn to you real quickly. You and I were talking earlier about this story. Your sources are saying some interesting things behind the scenes to you. Well, what I'm hearing from a number of sources is that the, the mayor's attorneys are going to be talking about a deal with Kim Worthy pretty soon. And uh, the mayor's attorney, Jim Parkman, denies this. He says they've been out of town for three days. There haven't been any talks. They're not moving in that direction. But when you think about it, it makes some sense because the mayor's problems are piling up. He's got some possibly some new charges coming down from Mike Cox tomorrow. This other case is moving to trial. Now he's locked up in jail. And we hear Tim Skubik saying the governor is going to hold removal hearings. The council is going to hold removal hearings. I think his bargaining chip is that I'll step down if I can get something in return. It makes sense to me that now is the time to do it because the window of opportunity, it seems to me, could be closing. Charlie, the mayor did a lot of talking in court today. He apologized uh, to the judge. He referred to the pressure that he's been under. Let's listen to a part of what he said in court today. My life has been revolutionarily transformed and is transforming in front of an eye of these media people that don't know me at all. All right, what kind of effect do you think that is going to have down the road? I couldn't believe that the lawyers would let the mayor speak like that. There was no reason for the mayor to speak. Revolutionary transform his life? I mean, if that doesn't give anybody uh, the sense that the mayor should step down or at the minimum take a leave of absence, I don't know why. Those are the mayor's words. He said that today. You can't do it. There's something about client control. When you represent a client who is as notable as the mayor is, the best thing that a lawyer can do is keep the mayor under wraps. And what you want to do is not let him talk. I am shocked that he talked. I, it's going to hurt him down the road. They will use this against him to try to get him out of office. Everyone's going to use it against him. And I think the judge tomorrow is going to use it against the mayor because he can't do two things. He can't have the job as a mayor and carry on with these criminal cases. And if he pleads guilty, he's going to be gone. Something's got to give. I think there is a lot of indication that the mayor is cracking up right now. I, and I mean that. I, you got to step aside and you got to do something right now. Otherwise, 
I feel very sorry for the mayor, but it's, it's happening right now. The we pressure suck. has to be so immense. Well, I think we all have to agree that the pressure on this it's man... It's immense. It's intense. Yeah. Could you imagine that? Eight felonies against you. Now the governor's going to hold hearings. Mike Cox is probably, with about a 99% certainty, going to bring more assault. These are felony charges against a police officer. And you want to run the mayor and make these deals, and run the city. I don't know how anybody can stand it. And I'll tell you what, you got to watch him. You make sure that he doesn't go completely off the deep end, which is possible. And that's why Warren Evans is watching him tonight. It's protocol, but there's a reason for that. And we've got to be conscientious of that. And if Mike Cox does decide to do that, he's announcing it tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Yes. And we will be there. You'll see it right here on Fox 2 and MyFoxDetroit.com. But before then, this story continues to develop even while we're all sitting here. New developments ahead at 6 o'clock. You're going to hear from the man who is now in charge of the city of Detroit. At the center of the lawsuit that started the mayor's legal troubles is reacting to the news today. Former Deputy Police Chief Gary Brown's lawsuit over his dismissal led to the entire sex and tech scandal. Brown says he's relieved to see Judge Ronald Giles treat Kilpatrick like anybody else in the legal system. I think that's all the citizens of the city of Detroit want out of the justice system is fairness and for everyone to be treated alike. Now, I know no one wants to see the mayor go to jail, uh, but uh, this is of his own making. I mean, he was warned three different occasions, and uh, it's justice. Gary Brown was one of three Detroit police officers who claimed they were wrongly dismissed from their positions. Their whistleblower lawsuit was settled last year for $8.4 million.